Hi there, my name is Dana Coverstone, and uh, I pastor Living Word Ministries of Assembly of God Church in Burksville, Kentucky. We're 12 miles north of Tennessee Line. I've uh, been a pastor for <clears throat> almost 30 years, been at this church almost 10, be 10 years as October. Um, been in three different places in ministry in that 30 years, averaging about 10 years, nine and a half, 10 years each place. But uh, the reason for this this video right now is I had another dream last night. I posted one that I had, three that I'd had um, earlier this week, and I've been absolutely overwhelmed. Almost 11,000 people have watched that. I had no clue it would go that far. I was just trying to say something to our people here locally and those that knew me. Um, but I do believe God has spoken to me and showed me through some dreams some things that are coming. <clears throat> the one I had last night, uh, I got up somewhere in the neighborhood of 3.30, 3.35, and just got my, my iPhone out and made notes as fast as I could. Uh, I do believe that this is something that we are on the precipice of, and perhaps has even started, and it deals with persecution of the church that's coming. And uh, there was a surprising twist for me, in it. and I, I want to share this. I don't want to keep doing dreams all the time. Uh, I'd rather not have the dreams I've had because there's a lot of responsibility with them. And uh, one of the consequences of dreams, just like Daniel, Daniel got sick, he was tired, he was exhausted. Um, these things have played with my mind all this last, all this week, all day long. All I can think about is what I what I saw and heard last night. Uh, I work part time at the local hospital, so I had to be at work at five thirty this morning. <clears throat> Just got off about two, so I wanted to get this on video format so I can share it tomorrow and put it on our YouTube channel as well. Um, look, I've never pastored a church larger than one hundred fifty people. I've never made a whole lot of money ever as a pastor. Uh, and and I, I mostly pastored in rural communities. Terre Haute was a larger, so the largest city ever pastored in. Uh, our county has about 7,200 people. I grew up in a town of about you know 1,500 in Jasonville, Indiana. Um, so I don't have a whole lot of you know big city connections or things like that. And that's not what this is about either. I just God has given me dreams that I believe are warnings. And and this one specifically is for the church. I don't have a time frame on this one. But I'm going to just tell you what I, what, I, what I experienced. And then you can, once again, I, with a video I showed the other day, you can judge anything you want about this because I'm not trying to make money. I'm not trying to get connections. I'm not trying to get more followers or people to be on Facebook friends. Um, I know I've heard from the Lord. I know what his voice sounds like. I know when I have dreams that are from him. <clears throat> and I know this was from him. So in the dream, I was standing over a field or looking down on a valley and there was a large field, and there was a bunch of wolves in this field. And I'm, I'm looking at notes on my, on my, uh, off of my phone on my computer so I can make sure I get all the valid points in that I need to make. <clears throat> all these wolves were in this field, and they were asleep. And there were hundreds, hundreds, perhaps even thousands of wolves, all dark gray, not black, but just dark gray and menacing, menacing wolves. Uh, and they were all sleeping. And they were nuzzling each other and just kind of laying around and no movement at all. And suddenly somebody on, a, on, a, on a, a very dark figure began running into the middle of all those wolves. And with a, it looked like a whip, began to whip all those wolves. And the wolves began to wake up and they were shrieking and, and making horrible noises. Because they were waking up to being hurt. <clears throat> and as I watched, the, the person with, with the whip just kept whipping them. And, and, and he kept basically stirring them into, into a frenzy. He wasn't beating them on purpose. He was beating them into a frenzy. He was making them mad. He was infuriating them. He was trying to get them stirred up. And he kept whipping. And every single animal, every single wolf that was in that, that area had been hit by, the, hit by the man. But they weren't hurting him. They showed some respect of him. They showed some fear of him. Obviously, he was like a master. And so as he kept whipping these wolves, the wolves finally kind of cowered down and he, point, he stopped. And he pointed, just, he pointed his finger and he turned around, almost like if I were to put my finger, he just spun in a circle. And he said, go to the cities. And those wolves took off in every single direction possible, howling, 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 top of their lungs, taking off. And the, and the sky is dark. I, I don't remember if I saw a moon. I just know it was a dark night, a dark sky, a dark figure, dark wolves, and now they're being set loose. And these things are, are being, they're being sent to the cities after being whipped and beaten by whoever it was that was you know, stirring them up. So, next scene changes, and I'm standing in front of a, almost like a monitor, a video screen of hundreds of TV sets, or just hundreds of, of, of computer screens. And I'm watching 
men and women of God, pastors, of black, white, um, Asian, uh, Indian, all, over, uh, all around the world. And I saw myself, and we're all preaching a gospel. And each one of us is sweating. And we are, there's almost like steam coming off of our heads that shows the, the, uh, just the impact of what we're trying to make. And we're preaching hard, and we're, and we're teaching hard, and we're teaching biblical principles and dealing with some of the major issues and things like that in culture. But we're calling people to righteousness and holiness and to, and to give up ungodly things that are part of their lives. And as I'm doing this, and as I'm preaching, others are, and I'm watching all these other men and women preach, I see people in the chairs, in the pews, in the seats, and some are looking at their watches, and some are yawning, and some have their heads on the back of the chair of the pew, and they're asleep. Others are just, you can tell, uncomfortable. They don't want to be there. I see people walking out the back doors. But compared to that, I also see, at the front of the church, I see a handful. And I'm, I'm going to call it a core. I will not use the word remnant, um, because when I think of the word remnant, I think of that applying specifically to the Jewish people. But there was a small core group in every church I saw where the gospel was being preached, a small core group of people who were emphatically listening, emphatically supporting their pastors who were preaching, who were uh, supporting the doctrine, the teaching, um, the ideas that were coming out from these men and women of God. And they were kneeling in prayer, and they were praying, and they were supportive. And, but they, were, they, were, they weren't necessarily unaware of what was going on around them, but they knew there were people that, that weren't paying attention. And I could see that they were also praying for those in the chairs behind them who weren't listening. And all of the ones that weren't listening were behind those, in, behind those who were at the altar. There were some at the altar. There were some in the front, you know, the front couple chairs and rows and pews. But for the most part, there was a gap between those that were really listening and paying attention and those that weren't. And suddenly, in the midst of all this preaching and the, and the, and the, and the people being sweaty from the, the intensity of the message they were preaching, suddenly the howling of wolves lands outside. And you suddenly hear scratching at the door, like a, like a, just like, like a dog trying to get in or a dog trying to get out. And at that moment, the people who were up front, close to the, to the, to the pastor and close to the altar, began to turn around and they, they were aware that something was at the door. And they began to intensely pray just intensively pray and aggressively pray against the enemy, against the spirit that was at the door. And suddenly the door didn't burst open, but the, the wolves just began to come in. And they began to walk around. Uh, they walked up and sniffed some of the people who were just listening. And the people who weren't listening at all really had no idea that they were there at all. Now, when, when, the, when the wolves came in, one key aspect, I think, I, I don't know if I said it or not, all of these wolves had red eyes. When they woke up and were being stirred into, fly, into, into fury, they had ravenous red eyes, almost like a, a red LED light. It shone out. It was like when you take a picture of an animal or someone and, and the red in their eyes shows up. It was that kind of thing. And before they were, you know, when they were being stirred up and whipped by that, that, that black leader, character, master figure, those eyes began to glow and get brighter and brighter. So when they were set loose and go into the cities, what he said, their eyes were just flaming. So now these animals come into the churches, but their eyes aren't red. They're just black and compliant. They're looking around, they're watching, and they go and they sit. Every single person in the church that I was preaching in. And look, I did not recognize some of the people in my church. I recognized some of them. I also recognized the ones who were at the very front the core group who were praying and seeking God's face and listening and being supportive of what was being said. And once again, I saw hundreds of faces. So I know I'm not the only preacher who's preaching the kind of things that I preach and dealing with issues I deal with. I'm not, I'm not the only one who is, is saying, hey, these things are sin, these things can't be a part of our lives. I'm not the only one. There were hundreds of faces that I saw. But the wolves came up and sat down in the chairs, in the pews, right beside the people who were not listening. And even those people didn't really understand that there was a wolf beside them. There was no fear, no worry, no concern, nothing like that at all. And, and it was almost as if they didn't even realize they were there. But then the more and the louder that I preached, and the more intensely I preached, and the more I dealt with issues and things that were sin, obviously, in our world and in the Bible, these people began to stir. And all of a sudden, the wolf's eyes became red and redder and redder. And... As, as the people got irritated, the wolves began to growl. And when they would begin to growl, the people who weren't listening were saying, shut up, stop saying that. I don't want to hear that. They were, they were very, very aggressive words like, stop saying those things. 
And in my message, in my head, I kept preaching, I kept preaching, I kept preaching. And on the, on the screens that I'm seeing in my head, all these people just kept preaching and preaching and preaching. Finally, the people who aren't listening that are now listening and are saying, shut up and stop. The wolves are, they're, they're, they're like wrestling beside them. They're, they're nudging them. They're, they're, getting them. they're getting them worked up too. So the enemy works these wolves up. The wolves come in. They stir up the people. And now the wolves start coming up towards me. And on the screens I'm seeing, those wolves are coming up near other pastors, other preachers, other, other men and women of God who are trying to say, don't do this and stop doing this. And this is the way, you know. Um, Jesus said the way was narrow and the gate was very small to get in. So we were preaching that kind of a message. And as we're preaching that, those wolves are coming up and they start nipping at my leg. And they're starting to try to bite some of the people that I'm watching on screen. And, and they're growling and they're getting right up in our face. Or one jumps up on the pulpit, gets right in my face and is growling. I can, I can see the saliva dripping off of his teeth. And I'm trying to push him off the screen and he bites my arm. And, and, and he's grabbing my legs. And I'm watching, I'm watching some of my people that I know, people that I know that are preachers and are pastors and share the same heart for ministry and preaching that I do. I see them, the, 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 some of these, these wolves are taking them down to the ground and they're growling and we just keep preaching and, and, and they keep biting and they just keep biting and they just keep attacking us. And, and the louder we get, the, the louder the wolves howl. And the people at the altar, they're praying. And, and, and they're praying for safety and they're praying for protection. Now, I'm just going to tell you, the wolves weren't necessarily attacking the people that were praying. They were stirring up the people who weren't listening, and they were attacking the preachers, the pastors. Those of us that were trying to preach the message that God had given us, and the intensity in that moment was, was just, it was profound for me. And even in the message, as, as I'm preaching, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to kick a wolf here and, and this, and, 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 and so and it was no way, we just kept preaching. We, we were being overwhelmed and attacked. And people are getting up and they're leaving. I'm talking to people who weren't listening. They're getting up and they're leaving and they're slamming the doors and they're just making a big scene. We're not coming back. You won't show up. We're done hearing this. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. And they leave. And suddenly, the scene changed. And I saw courtrooms. And I saw judges with gavels pounding, just pounding, pounding at the bench. I saw pastors in chains. I had shackles on myself. I see people in the jury seats and in the witness stand and they're crying. And the judges are saying, you can no longer preach this message. You can no longer declare that this type of lifestyle is sin. You cannot say anything bad about this kind of lifestyle. You cannot say anything bad about this situation. You cannot address these things from the pulpit ever again. You cannot say this. You cannot say that. You cannot say that Jesus is the only way. That's one specific thing I remember. You cannot say that abortion is a sin. That I remember as well. You cannot deal with alternative lifestyles and call them uh, awful, terrible things. You can't say that these things violate Scripture. You can no longer preach from Scripture was one obvious thing that was stated and said. And, 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 and most of us that were in there were saying, we can't do that. We can't do that. And the gavel comes down in anger. And they're mad, they're mad, they're mad. And then I saw churches surrounded by mobs of people. People that were yelling to shut it down, even burn it down. I saw people who were being so hateful towards the church. I saw people harassing believers who were going into church services. I saw people waiting outside after church to harass people who were coming from church to go home, I saw just hateful attitudes. But the thing that stood out in my mind, most of the people in those crowds were the people who'd been sitting in those chairs and those pews and were not listening to begin with. And in that moment, it struck me, even in the dream, that some of the biggest persecution the church is going to face coming very, very soon, and probably, I believe we've already started, some of the biggest persecution will come from those who sat in our churches never accepted the word of God as the word of God, raised in all their lives and now want to walk away because they do not like the preaching of the word of God that says this is sin, sin, this is wrong. You cannot walk in this and still be a believer. It was, it was the group of people, that, it, was, it was the sons and daughters and grandchildren of people who've been raised, they've been raised in church all their lives 
But they've said, we've had it. There's nothing in this for me. This gospel has no power, has no authority. It says, I can't have this. I can't do that. I can't go where I want to go. I can't be who I want to be. I can't do what I want to do. And those were the people who were screaming. They were throwing rocks. They had baseball bats and guns in their hands. They were throwing threats at those of us who were coming out of the church. And the anger was led once again by those who had fallen away. And I do believe that people can fall away from the Lord. I believe in backsliding. Those were the people who were pushing back against everything they had been taught. Those that have gone away to college, those away that have become very, very liberal in all they think and all they do, those who have given in to some of the ideas of the protest movements that we're seeing today and the ideologies that we're seeing today, the ideologies that say that one race is better than others. The thing I saw about the pastors who were preaching, they were of every race and color. I saw black and I saw white. I saw Native American. I saw Indian. I saw African. I saw Russian. I saw everybody. I saw Chinese. I saw people who were preaching the gospel. We're not, I'm, I'm not the only one. But I'm telling you what I saw. Because the biggest persecution that came, came from the people who had walked away from the church. And then I saw pulpits being chopped up with axes. The big old style wooden pulpit. I saw them being just chopped to pieces. I saw plexiglass pulpits being hammered, hammered. I saw Christians in chains. I saw them publicly ridiculed, and I saw them publicly assaulted because their ideas were old-fashioned and needed to go. And then I heard a cry that I've heard for six months, but there was something added to it. I heard, brace yourself and endure to the end. And just like that, I woke up. I woke up, my heart was racing. Because I saw people that I knew. I saw missionary friends of mine on the foreign field. I saw pastor friends. I saw district leaders and officials from states that I know who were being attacked by those wolves while they preached the gospel and held to that standard of the word of God. And they would not back down. And I saw the intensity in their eyes and, and, the, and, and, the, and, and the fight of their faith because of what they were dealing with and facing at that very moment. I saw it was laid out. And I share this because I want those that, like I said, there's been almost 11,000 views of that video I showed of the three dreams I had. I never, I never asked for that. I never wanted that. I just wanted to get a message out because I felt God gave me something, show me something for the church and those that might be lost and need to hear it. But I'm telling you this right now. This is to the church. This is to pastors. This is to missionaries. These, this is to those people who, who, are, who, who believe the word of God is the word of God without any, you know, there's too much compromise in the gospel right now. And I believe the Lord is showing me that some of the biggest persecution we're going to face is going to come from within the church itself, not from the lost, not from Muslims, not from protesters. It's going to come from people who sat in our churches and refused to listen to the truth of the Word of God. And they exchanged the truth of God for a lie, and Romans 1 comes out to play right here and right now. Sean King and others are calling for all the, the statues of white Jesus. Jesus was Jewish. He wasn't white. But his blood covers everyone's sin. His message gives every race, every color, every creed hope. So to my pastor friends, I say get with it. Don't stop preaching the hard gospel. Don't stop preaching the word of God and the full gospel behind it. And there's going to be a price that we pay for it. It's going to bring some need for endurance in our lives. But if we can't endure now, then what we've been preaching has been a lie all the time. God's calling us to the forefront, men and women of God. Preachers, get on your knees. Get in your secret place. Get in your prayer closet. Hear from God and preach what he says. Say what he says. 
Declare the message He gives you and do not stand down. No matter what it costs, no, what it, no matter what it does to you or your family, brace yourself and endure to the end.